Chapter 966, Roger and Whitebeard and some secrets. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Pa D Cast. I'm the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. Hey, uh, before we get into the topic of the chapter, uh, we should mm-hmm. mention all of the, the scanlation stuff. So, Nate, you, I think, are more up to speed on, on all that stuff. Could Indeed. You, uh, please divulge what has happened. Certainly. Uh, you guys should probably know this if you read the scanlations uh, fast as fuck as we do. Uh, so for the last while, um, there's been... Uh, if you've been following the scanlation scene for many years, you've probably seen rounds of uh, uh, websites getting taken down, being copyright noticed, and uh, then the websites generally go down to avoid lawsuits. It seems what happened is that Viz Media, who has the um, like the Western or English publishing rights of One Piece... Uh, and they run the official releases of of the One Piece chapters, Uh, they sent a copyright takedown notice to, uh, I believe it was Manga Stream. So Manga Stream, which is one of the two ones we generally use, is effectively no more. But they are are shut down. Maybe one day it'll come back. Who can say? Probably not. Just like one manga back in the day and so many other sites throughout history. Uh, Jaimini's Box, in in, uh, response to seeing this happen, made the executive decision themselves that, well, we don't want this to happen to us as well, so what we are going to do is we are going to voluntarily take down all our Shonen Jump properties, so as of this moment, you can't read One Piece on Manga Stream, because Manga Stream's gone, or on uh, Jaimini's, because they voluntarily took it down to avoid potential lawsuits and anything like that, which leaves, to my mind, a, a vacuum of what's to be done. Now, of course, there are the official releases of One Piece. And to, as I understand it, those cost $25 a year, I believe. So it's like, you know, 50 cents a chapter. Is it worth it? Yeah, probably. Probably if there's nothing else going on. But what, what this has done is this has raised... Uh, it has once again raised the great question of what's to be done. So in response to this news, quite a few of our contemporaries, the One Piece discussion o sphere. Uh, the question has been raised once again that what is the place for scanlations in the world versus official releases? Because when both you and I started reading One Piece many years ago and other manga, uh, the world was a very different place. There was no, like, fast, uh, scanlations coming out from any official sources. It had to be pirated. It had to be done, uh, outside the realm from just dedicated fans. And that culture has propagated to, like, Jaiminis and Manga Stream that we've been using. But, in recent years, as a matter of fact, folks, now, now's a good time to review the facts. Uh, in Japan, as I understand it, Shonen Jump comes out. It's a weekly magazine, of course, uh, that is in print. That's where most people in Japan get it. Um, and I think they have an online one now, too, as, as of a few years ago. It comes out on Saturdays. Now, you probably know, we get our chapters before Saturday every week. On, they come out, like, Thursday night, Friday. And if we're fast, we can get a, uh, a, a podcast up that day or the next day or whatever. Um, but we're actually getting it before it comes out on those Saturdays, uh, before it comes out officially, because the Scanlation team generally seems to work with leakers, who, like, leak the scans um, from within the company or whatever, then people upload it and technically get it up ahead of time. Uh, And then, but, the the, the people right now, many people are saying, just use the official releases from Viz in English. Like, it's official, it comes out regularly, there's no need, it it comes out, like, on time with when it comes out physically in Japan. So there's, quote-unquote, no wait time. But the pragmatic reality is, uh, as soon as Jaimini's and Manga Stream went down, like, there was a chapter up, by the folks on on the 4chan A board. Uh, Those guys got one done quickly. And, of course, now's the time to celebrate our boys at the Pod D Discord, led by Cy and Blumier, and there was a whole team of folks. They themselves produced a scanlation when they, they, they adapted a Portuguese scan, and they then translated that to English and made it available on Mangadex, uh, which the world can read, and we are all better for. So yeah. they are true sc- scanlation heroes to get us the things that uh, that we need. Because I mean, e- even if even if we all decided today, like, okay, we won't use scanlations anymore, we would have to like, I, I mean, I would have to figure out where to pay, where to get the chapters, blah blah blah, all that nonsense. So at the very least, for uh, for like a week or whatever, they have they have saved our bacon, and and it it fills me with uh, joy 
that like not just them, but several different groups produce cancellations. Though our boys, our soy boy boys in the pod Discord, <laughs> were were the first to have it up on a oh, manga shit. translation were website. They? To, the, uh, to be fair, though, there was a group that had one up on, like, Imgur, so it existed before they were done, but our boys were among the very first to get one available well, to the public. And, uh, I, I, I just, it is. I, I've, I had no idea that our boys mm-hmm. in the Poddy Discord could do such a cool thing, and I'm really, I'm really impressed. Mm-hmm. As am I. And then, uh, let's just shout out everybody. It was, let me see, Blumier, Autoloose did the translation, Clean Up was by Rogue Artist and Sean Barry. Um, Soy Boy Theories helpfully translated all instances of Zorro to Zolo. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, typesetters were Cyrosaur, Centerpoint, Albert something, Caswell, and uh, the supervisors were Fig, Caswell, and Rogue Artist. So thank you guys for working on this. Really appreciate it. But let's. So the, the last thing I want to touch on about this incident is. So with, with another round of like these, you know, absolutely technically pirating websites. Um, they, you know, they use these pirated scanlations basically and translate them for the Western audiences. Now that there's been another round of like websites being taken down, Jaime is voluntarily shutting down. The, 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 the conversation has once again resurged to, should we just be using official scans? Uh, like, are we committing a moral crime by using scanlations or even beyond that? Is there like a purpose to scanlations anymore? And the I, arguments I hear, mm, yeah, go I, on. What, what do you think? What do you? I think? think. I mean, it seems like not much of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a big expense, and mm-hmm. presumably the scans are very good. Um, I think I've looked at the presumably. site. Presumably, they do translate Zoro as Zolo, though. Yeah, so that's, I mean, uh, that's there, odd. There's things like that. <laughs> I think I would prefer both to mm-hmm. exist, mm-hmm. mostly because. We're dealing with translation in general. It's always nice to have mm. multiple different interpretations of a translated mm. work, just in case there's something lost in in the official one. They call Inu Arashi so, Dog Storm, for example. I mean, um, that is kind of funny. It is funny. It is hilarious, and I'm sure that's closer to how it would sound in English. But I, I, exactly as you're saying, you can just feel in any one translation, things are lost. You know, and it's, I suppose it's a little strange to, to raise this issue. But, it's, I mean, you and I have grown up with this culture of multiple scans existing and, and comparing them and whatnot. And we know that we're dealing with, like, language barrier issues that we have to overcome. I, for one, am pretty dubious of just putting all my hopes in, like, just the one crowned official scanlation. Because I just don't really trust them more than I trust, like, just the fuckboys boys. Uh, who are making them now in Jaimanese and Manga Stream and our boys who did the translation. I mean, yeah. I don't trust there's anyone. There's always a level of, like, mm-hmm. you know, people do these things for no money. Therefore, the the passion right. to get it correct, it, like the, the autism involved, is, is mm-hmm. it, you're more likely to get something more accurate than in a situation mm-hmm. where people are paid to do it. It's it's not like I agree. it's not like it's a bad thing that the mm-hmm. the official scans are like I don't even mind like being seen as like an outsider like oh you shouldn't do that it's bad like that's fine like yeah. I don't I don't mind having that like reputation I mm-hmm. I just like I just like the 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 difference the the sort of like more passionate sort of mm-hmm. like that nobody's perfect obviously all sca- not all scans are scanlations are mm-hmm. um. You know, the, the, there have been many Created instances <laughs> in on this show where we've struggled to understand, mm-hmm. like just certain things that have been translated differently by different uh, scanlation things. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a difficult question to answer. There's no, there's like, yeah, yeah. I don't really want to come out and say, ah, fuck official stuff, because it's not like, it's not like uh, I'm mm-hmm. like doing this to like save a p- pinch a few pennies. It's a different sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I'm I'm always happy to save money wherever I can on things. Uh, but there's there's larger questions at hand. I, I could even be persuaded to believe that the official quote unquote official scan. I mean, okay, they are the official scans. They're like the one that they are endorsed. They are the ag- official publisher. The official scans by Viz, though those might be the best. But do I still think there will be just through the nature of scanlation or translation, like things that I don't necessarily like like calling. Inu Arashi, Dog Storm, 
Like, does that make sense? Technically, yeah. But that's the whole game of translation. There are multiple ways to interpret any given thing, and I don't really trust one authoritary, authoritative source. And I mean, let's just quickly reflect on the fact that this is One Piece. One Piece is the most, like, anti-authoritarian story, like, ever told. <laughs> It's about, like, just doing whatever the fuck... You, I'm not even saying, like, yeah, fuck the corporate, t you know, fuck their money. Uh, I'm not saying, like, that's good. I'm saying, like, fuck authority figures telling me what's right and what I need to do. I'm gonna do just what works best, and I, and I will absolutely cop to just the fact that the these, like, leaked transcripts that become the scans that we have known for years, the fact that they come out three days before when the official scans come out, that is the biggest hurdle. And you know what? If I was Viz, if I was Suecia, and I was in control of this, I would really attempt to stop that. I, If I was the company, I would try to, to crush that in order to funnel people to my official translations. And I would not blame Viz or, or you know, uh, Suecia or Jump, whatever. Maybe it's Oda himself. I wouldn't blame the company for trying to stop that practice. But as long as that practice does exist and someone is making these happen, just purely pragmatically, I will go find the fastest, easiest to find ones. And, you know, there's there's some voices out there who are being pretty preachy right now. Pretty like, oh, support the artist. I'm very dubious as to how much money actually gets back to Oda, to fucking Suasia. And, like, it's the corporate interests, in my opinion, that are making, like, the publishers of, like, the merchandise and uh, whatever. And will more money be in the hands of of the company that helps Oda make it? I mean, sure, but Oda's drawn a salary. Oda doesn't own One Piece, Suecia owns One Piece. Uh, I don't think, it's not like we're stealing money from Oda by doing things like this. So all the, all that bullshit about, uh, you know, you, you stop stealing money from Oda, stop taking money from these guys by reading scanlations, it just, even, that might even, that might even be somewhat true. There might be some link that one can draw there, but, I just don't give a shit. I, I don't care. It's fine. The industry is not going to collapse due to this. And mm. if these guys want to put the effort in in order to constrict the leaking such that we are not able to get scanlations anymore, that is their right. I would respect the effort in doing so. Um, but uh, just pragmatically speaking, I just don't think it's worth shifting to the official scans for all the reasons we've talked about here. Mm. And uh, I don't think anyone should feel bad for just one, doing the thing that's the easiest and makes yeah. the most sense. Yeah. Uh, one more point, though, about mm -hmm. money. Sure. Um, it, you know, it is nice to, to get the chapter a ASAP. So, like, even mm -hmm. if we weren't doing a show about it, I would like that. Yeah. Um, but for us, getting the, the chapter reviews out as fast as possible is good for, mm -hmm. like, clicks and stuff. True. So if, like, in the future the, the culture changes and everybody who would watch our show is mm -hmm. reading the official thing, then being so early would have, mm -hmm. you know, sort of lost its uh, relevance. And I think in that situation it wouldn't be so bad uh, to, um, mm -hmm. to go with the official one uh, down the line. So That's true. And you know, and I, I, if the culture changed and that was the thing, I, yeah, that that'd be fine. I would, I would definitely consider doing that. It's, but like, I mean, there will always in like our little business here, there will always be a rush to get to it before anybody else. So obviously, there's going to be an impetus on us to want to yeah. do that stuff. But I just, I just don't feel like there's a combination of like a moral argument to like support the official release or whatever. And then there's this idea that, like, it's the real official scans. I just don't feel that way. I just don't value their translation. I like having just random fucks on the internet translating my chapters for me. I, I actually prefer that to, like, I don't know, practiced, uh, dubbed by the industry, acceptable. I mean, I don't know. Uh, for many reasons, I, I strongly feel that way, so... I don't know. And, I, you know, I, I understand. It's easy to be like, lol, it's a pirate manga, guys. Like, you guys are fucking assholes. Like, of course I'm going to pirate it. That's that's a pretty weak argument. It's easy to make it against these guys who are moral fagging right now. Um, but really, it, just for a, for all that confluence of reasons, I don't feel any strong need to, to shift over at the moment. And I hope that these scanlations keep getting made. And if they don't, hey, 
I'll pay the 25 bucks a year or whatever. I'll adapt. I'll live. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, them's, them's the breaks. All right. Quite okay. Hefty, well, we've addressed that. Yeah. Quite a hefty discussion. Uh, I think we'll like mm-hmm. have a, a time stamp to the actual chapter. We can do that. We can do yeah. that. Uh, and th- that hefty discussion precedes a very hefty chapter indeed. So yes. I will be reading uh, uh, Our Boys, Our Sai Buier. I don't know how to pronounce it. Scanlation group from the Pod Discord. So let's uh, let's see what they've got. Let's start. Chapter 966, Roger and Whitebeard. Oh, boy. And first off, we got to check in on our lovely little crime family. With uh, volume 16, Bee Gees' wife was caught by the Marines while getting her hair done. That was a bad decision to get your hair done. Yeah, at a time um, like this. <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. Uh, also, are you are you enjoying these odd and interesting looking Marines? There's like a girl with a weird hat on the left there. There's a big man. There's a small man with a weird hat brim. I think I've seen these guys before, but I can't I, tell. I don't know. I think... No, I don't think I... I they mean, sure this, are freaks. This, this hairdresser is looking pretty good as well. So it's like... Oh, she is. That's just true. a bunch of, bunch of character designs. Um, Her character design is so good that I feel like she's going to play a not tiny role in whatever happens over the next, I don't know, couple of pages. I could be wrong, though. But I'll be interested to see. So, yeah, I think whatever is transpiring right now is like Beji's mm-hmm. wife um, and then Lola is also going to be around. Um, presumably. Presumably. Yeah. So it's like... Oh, there's going to be a mix-up. There's going to be a switch-up. Ooh, you're absolutely right. Oh, I, I, I didn't think of that, but that's that's almost certainly what's going to happen. Oh, Chiffon, you get yourself into the silliest circumstances. Uh, okay, so that's it. We we shall see. We yep. shall see. Let's get on. Saibmier scanlation. Sip Thanks, miar. boys. Let's get to the chapter. <laughs> All right, so we start immediately with the fight between Roger and Whitebeard. Indeed. Uh, Odin, of course, <laughs> as usual, runs ahead, and he's like, ah, I'm just going to fucking attack him, and it's going to be all mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> um, but this is the Roger fucking pirates you're about Roger to fuck pirates, with, so, yes. yeah. <laughs> we got Gaban. You said he was a, a known pirate before, didn't you? Ah, uh, yeah, so this guy, Scopper Gaban, has shown up since, uh, I believe the, his first appearance was with, like, Buggy's flashback to when, like, Buggy was, like, on a crew. We didn't know at that time it was the Roger Pirates. Uh, it might have even been at like, the very beginning or something, but, but yeah, uh, this guy, his full name is Scopper Gaban, and we see him next to Silver's Rayleigh. So, okay, there's Goldy, Gold Yo. Roger, Silver's Rayleigh, and Scopper Gaban. I so there see. appears to be so first, a theme going on. First, second mate, I suppose. Uh, well, okay, actually, let, let's address that real quickly, because we see uh, Silvers and Scopper uh, out here being like, eh, we're going to cut him to fucking pieces. And if I had to guess, they're probably stronger than Odin, but we, we, we don't know. It could be anything. But here we see Gold Roger here, just being a silly little boy, running out in front of these guys, saying like, hey, I don't want to put my two best men in peril. And they're like, oh, Roger, we know you just want to fight him. Now, yeah. this is actually a, I would call it a, a light mistranslation. And I don't blame our boys because they were translating the Portuguese, uh, and the uh, the guys on um, on A who translated this also translated it wrong. The the this phrase being used here, I don't want to put my best men in peril. Okay, guys, we all read One Piece. We're all shown in fags. We know that when people read this, they're going to think like power level, like bounty in their brain. Ah, I have just rationalized. Roger is strongest, then Silver's Rayleigh, and then Scopper Gaban. I have now codified. I can type this up on the fucking wiki. I mean, these are the two. That does sound pretty like with the silver gold copper thing. Mm-hmm. Pretty, like, it, it does. Uh, I mean, why it, is it, it wrong? fits the pattern. I'll tell you why it's wrong. Because in the actual Japanese translation, what Roger actually says there is simply the phrase, I don't want you guys to get hurt. There's no mention of best man that never enters his mouth. Okay. He literally uses the word. Did you go uh, hang read on. the Japanese? I, I did read the Japanese, and I have it right. God damn, where the fuck did he, I think he used the word he used, like, uh, Kimi Tachi ni. Kimi means you. Tachi is like the pluralization. So he's saying like you guys and ni. And then he says like, I don't want you guys hurt. So kibi tachi ni just means you guys. There is no qualifier of like status or best in the sentence. It does not exist. 
So get this thought out of your mind, everybody, that he's officially coded. There could be someone stronger than these two guys in the crew. Do not type this on the wiki. I do not want to see it on the fucking wiki, okay? I know that they're the silver and the copper guys. Copper sucks. No one even likes copper. He could be way weaker than silvers. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, keep that in mind, folks. Don't get carried away with your coomer brains about power levels. Uh, we just don't know. <laughs> in any case... Moving on. In any on. case, Roger uh, swooshes Odin right through, and he, he just flies him away. Oh, oh there, and there's, trees. We, there, there's something to note about this. He absolutely does. So, yes, he fucking, uh, Gold Roger does, hey, Samurai, I'm going to fuck you up. And so he does. And so, so far, we've seen Odin seem pretty tough, but Roger easily just blasts him off with some one sword slash. And notably, uh, so this is a little thing that perhaps the shonen tard, such as myself, think about. Uh, he uses an attack name when he does it, uh, Kamusari, and uh, it's it's not translated in in ours, but in the other one, that's translated to aversion to divinity. So, aversion to divinity. This is literally the I don't believe in God slash. It's the there. It's literally the tip my fedora. Atheism is legit. Cut is what he the did athe against atheism slash. Yes. Atheism slash is basically what he did. But uh, I mean, uh, there, there's a the, so that's hilarious. So obviously, in the narrative of One Piece, Gold Roger, as I was saying before, with the, the whole thing here, Gold Roger represents like fuck authority, like fuck gods, fuck kings. I'm a pirate. I don't give a shit. Uh, the the pirate king is just the man who's the most free. And here he is, aversion to divinity, like blah blah blah. Authority sucks. It's, he, he le he's so hard into that shit, he made an attack name that's just him swinging a sword. Uh, cool. <laughs> Way to go, Roger. And, yeah. uh, and the Odin. other notable thing about this is that we've just, we have now confirmed Roger is a guy who uses attack names. There are just a handful of people in all of One Piece who don't use attack names. Roger, as king of the fucking pirates... You know, there were pro people could have thought there might have been one. He might have been one of those guys. He's never done one now. This is the first time Rogers actually fought in all of One Piece. This we're breaking so many fucking things in this chapter that we've never seen before about the the most important man in the entire fucking series. And in notably, notably, a man who does not use attack names, Whitebeard. Whitebeard has done various earthquake powers, various sword slashes but with this big goes, thing. He just goes. He them. just does. He just does it. He doesn't need to preface it with some gay name. He just fucking attacks. That's probably the uh, reason they dislike each other. Like the the, the first reason they started <laughs> fighting is like your your attack names suck. Uh, very true. You don't true. even have attack names. Die. <laughs> very very accurate. Very accurate. But but okay. Enough of that. Yeah. Uh, as you said, uh, Odin is blasted and looks, he's, he's blasted bleeding out of his mouth. And he, yeah, he, yeah. he smashes into one of those huge trees, but he's mm -hmm. immediately up and running again. So clearly yeah, he's, he's tough. Fine. He's tough enough to, to withstand one of those, but it's mm -hmm. an unbelievable power. And then Whitebeard <laughs> jumps in and they do a clash. Roger and Whitebeard do a sword clash with their, um, sure their hacky and blazoned uh, weapons. And it's so powerful that the blades can't even touch the air the, in between know. them it's just so fucking forced together that it creates a fucking nuclear bomb yeah <laughs> pretty much pretty much uh and uh, this is probably the biggest clash explode like we see the moby dick is like fucked up way over on the other side of the island crazy shit's going on with this attack uh, on this though i i, I have a, a few things to note about this I mean, first of all, this looks so fucking cool as Gold Roger and fucking Whitebeard wind up as they've got, like, this weird, like, electric hockey trail behind their fucking swords yeah, as like they an, swing uh, them. Yeah, electric black fire sort of thing. Holy shit, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. Uh, obviously, they both, like, have full hockey black blades, you know, as they're swinging at each other. And, and it is commented on specifically that, like, they aren't even touching. I think that Oda's doing two things with this. One, he's showing us how fucking cool these guys are. And also, this whole notion of how they aren't even touching. I think Oda's doing something a little bit clever here. And he's kind of just using this moment here, this history lesson between Whitebeard and Gold Roger, as a little bit of like a, this is what the armament hockey stuff that Luffy has been learning in this arc. This is kind of it at like a high level usage. The fact that their blades 
didn't even touch. Uh, it's the, like yeah. the projection of hockey thing. I just think that he 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 wanted to work that in a little bit and uh, something maybe cool. Zora could be. Oh, Zolo, mm-hmm. excuse mm-hmm. me. Oh, yes, <laughs> <do> correct. <laughs> That's the official name. Thank you for for using that. Uh, yes, pre- precisely, precisely. But uh, Bing Bong Bang, looks and look, looking good. Good swing, guys. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. after that, they just sort of like read each other, and then they say at the same time, "Give me everything you have." Uh, like, and they, give and me they all laugh. your shit. Then they laugh. You know, I, I don't know if we've seen this. Here's another One Piece ism. We've of course everyone knows that Whitebeard's laugh is good. Da 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 da. But I don't think we've ever heard Whitebeard or, or Gold Rogers laugh before. Maybe I'm forgetting, but it's. Ooh ha ha ha! This is a One Piece thing. His official confirmed laugh. A U A ha ha ha! Wa ha ha ha! That just sounds like a, a normal laugh. Well, it's you know, uh, not everybody is, is, is that different. It's me, Wario. Luffy does his she she she. I don't know. Uh, fucking uh, various people have various laughs. That's that's it's a One Piece thing. What do you know? Yeah. And now it's time to fight. Ah, everyone! Yeah, so Whitebeard versus everybody, Gold Roger. The whole crew just goes ape shit. Mm-hmm. We see, we see the two crews there. Holy shit! Is there anyone else in the Gold Roger crew we can recognize? There's okay, a guy great in the question. Back with uh, like a, uh, what do you call it? Some sort of a French powdered wig, like a, and a, musket and a musket or something. He looks like a fat, posh. Twink. He, he I don't know what like, he's doing here. He looks here. like the guy from Pocahontas. You know that guy? <laughs> he does. He does. Um, I, okay. Some. Pe- I was reading a little bit about this before, and I was seeing what people had said. Obviously, Scopper Gaban and Rayleigh, you know, we, we know those guys. Um, you know, I was actually looking through this chapter. Someone said that they found Bullet, who was like the antagonist of that last One Piece movie. Um, that they someone said they saw him in here. I can't find him, and I looked. So if other people can, great. Um, I, th- that big guy in the back of the of the Gold Roger crew, that like big, you know, unusually large man. He, I believe, I've seen before. This guy with like the weird like onion head, who's right at like the front of the of the panel here. I like he certainly stands out design wise. Currently, I don't remember ever seeing him before. And someone had said that um, that guy with bat wings, who's kind of like hovering over the rest of them, that that guy had been seen before, as well as that like French looking musket guy. Um, I don't remember ever seeing them, but I would believe that maybe they're in some of these like Odin flashbacks that we'd seen recently. Um, and there's like a bro. It looks like there's like a Viking on the bottom right with a very yeah. bushy mustache and beard, or a huge beard face. I don't and know, a, and, a, and he's holding like a giant mace, like a Morning Star or something. Yeah. Uh, I, I you know I don't know anyone's names beyond uh, the people who I who have already stayed, and I don't think they're out there. But, uh, but in fact, actually, you know what? Let me just give me one sec. I'm just gonna go to the the Roger Pirates wiki page, see if any of those guys have names or if they've been named or, or identified before. They have. Oh, okay. That big guy in the background. That is Seagull. His name is Seagull. Uh, that's all we know. <laughs> also, uh, also, Crocus. He isn't here right now, but obviously Crocus is in the crew too. But uh, we'll see more of him uh, in a moment. Okay, so that's it. So that's all we know. There, a you know, big fight rages. What? Yeah. Well, all right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I keep thinking of that one island where mm-hmm. Hawkeye and Shanks meet. Um, mm, yes. Yes. I forget what it looks like, but it's like sort of a generic island. Is this? Mm-hmm. Could this be that island, or am I just like remembering incorrectly? You know, I, I think I kind of remember that island is sort of generically jungly. I would this be. This is like huge, like comic, uh, like um, palm trees. Y- all yeah. Over. I mean, you know, because that was, like, old One Piece. It was, like, proto One Piece went back and that happened. That was, like, probably the first, like, 200 chapters or something. Like, this could be that island. I think the trees here are distinctive enough that I'd remember them if it was, if that was the island that they had been on before. So I, I don't think that it's that same place. There are a lot of islands out there. But yeah. um, it, it, I don't know. It could be. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, the, the mm-hmm. Roger Pirates and the White Bit Pirates fight for three days and three nights. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's, it's pretty even. It's pretty, pretty even. even. No one's winning. Mm-hmm. And then four days, they're they're having a good old party about it. They're having. A... I, I you know I was a little confused. I think they said that they fought for three days and three nights, and then after that period of three days, then four days after that is now they're they're happening with this. Um, I I don't know. I, mean, I could be wrong about that? that. Maybe. Like, I don't it know. Just seems it just seems the most logical that they fought for three days and three nights, and on the fourth day they were like, "Eh, let's just have a you know." Okay, you might be right. You, I, I, that, that seems more logical to me. 
So they, they've simply stopped fighting, and they are having a good time chilling and being bros, exchanging gifts, and Rayleigh's like, this just turned into a gift exchange. What the fuck? Oh, as they were, like, trying to steal each other's loot, it just became an exchange. Yeah, it became Christmas Hilarious. in Tinseltown. It became a, a gift swap. And I, I wonder if this is intentional. I'm liking Young Vista is a very sexy man with his ponytail and his cape. He looks totally sick. I wonder if they're kind of being the, like him and Rayleigh here are kind of the more level-headed of the group looking at the other silly boys and their silly gift exchange. I, again, I don't want to be a pattern boy, uh, but uh, perhaps that's slightly implied here. Uh, and then a very interesting panel here as we yes. uh, we see the, the junior members of the crew, which I suppose is... A, I, I think they're saying Marco and Jaws, as well as Blackbeard, are like the apprentices at this time, despite Marco being like number one no, boy later. I I thought, no, um, you think they're just saying Blackbeard here? No, Blackbeard is is talking. He's saying those boys right there are apprentices. Yes, they've oh, been shit. for a while. I, and it's okay. like they're talking about Shanks and Buggy and then Buggy. In and my Shanks defense, in my defense, the arrow pointing to Blackbeard to indicate he's talking is very small. I thought it was like someone else commenting on them. Wait a minute. Yeah. Because who's saying yes? They've been here for a while. I cannot detect an arrow anywhere around that bubble to well, point I mean, to who. Sometimes the, the, there is no arrow. <laughs> the, this is something I've seen. Okay, yeah, you, you might be right. Like, Marco's just laughing and said, yeah, they've been there for a while. And then Blackbeard... Because Marco is certainly presumably... older and stronger than, than Shanks and Buggy at this point, I would think. Yeah. Says they don't okay, look fair enough. Blackbeard, or I, I should say Black No Beard. Uh, right. Says mm. They don't look very strong, <laughs> but their attitude is very impressive, says Marco mm. in response. That's what I... It, it, that as. seems right. That seems right. And they do... Buggy and Shanks looking very stoic. I, I, so... I mean, I'm a little surprised so that Buggy and Shanks were the only apprentices, it seems, on the on the Gold Roger Pirates. Fair enough. I was kind of expecting there to be more, but fair enough. Fair enough. And then in response to this, white be- or black, fucking red hair, the fucking names and the beards mm-hmm. and the colors, Shanks and Buggy are saying, uh, or Buggy says, Shanks, look at, you see that motherfucker, that idiot with the hat over there? Uh, you know, that guy did not sleep at all during the last couple of days as we were fighting. Oh, wait, okay, so this, this is the thing. He says he hasn't slept during the ceasefire we've had in the last few days. How could they have had a ceasefire in the last few days if this is the day after the three days of fighting? It's, uh, it must be four days after, right? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, I mean, I, I'm, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to parse the language here. But So Buggy's saying that he has not slept at all, and that he heard, I assume from Whitebeard's crew, that he that Blackbeard Marshall D. Teach has not had to sleep since he was born? What an odd thing. I mean, that sounds like a, like a folklore thing, but, um, like, not yeah. real, but, like, he tries not to let people... It probably is, like, some sort of, like, defense thing, like, uh, as a child... Yeah. Whenever he slept, the creepy man would come and slap him in the face, and he would wake up. You, you know, there was some, a uh... some sort of thing like I, if I don't sleep, the clown mm-hmm. can't kill me. Uh, like, <laughs> that, that, you know, that, like that that would make sense. I although the way that it's stated here, I'm I'm led to believe that it is a fact that he has not like slept in a serious way over the last few days, and then the folklore is that he's never slept. I mean, he's probably slept at some point in his life. This is this is what I think is going on here, yeah. and. There's, uh, I, I, there was a Red Wall book I read years ago about a squirrel who was slept with one eye open. Maybe there's a thing. Uh, she was a she was a real rough and tumble squirrel. Maybe it's similar to to base squirrel Chan. Um, so this is perhaps making it sure makes Blackbeard seem a little suspicious and may, maybe just a like little, untrustworthy I mean, in nature. Definitely a bit of a freaky weirdo. Because yeah, he is. and and of course this calls into question something so notable like this, the thing that was said long ago by um, by Marco during the War of the Best. Who obviously Marco knew Blackbeard pretty fucking well. They were on the same crew for like forty years. Um, that like something about like with his body, he's a little bit different than other people was, like, the, more or less the word said after Blackbeard, like, stole the, um, the devil fruit from Whitebeard. Which, again, raises the old weird theory that Blackbeard is, like, one of those people who is maybe, like, born with... Uh, okay, this is a retarded... Th- I'll just go through it quickly. There's a theory that when uh, they first met Blackbeard... It isn't like the most retarded theory of all time, but it could be true. Of uh, when they first met Blackbeard in... Uh, uh, what's it called? That place before... Jaya, in Jaya. Jaya, yeah. They used the word they, like, uh, something about, like... They were, they were speaking about Blackbeard, and then Zoro says, you mean they. And Nami's like, huh? What do you mean? 
And like, we, the most likely thing is that when he said they, he's actually referring to the fact that Blackbeard had his crew and that White and that, you know, Zoro and Luffy were able to detect that like, this was like a group of people all together. But some people think that that in combination with Marco's comment about his body means like there's something weird about Blackbeard and maybe he's actually made of multiple people. So maybe for example, Blackbeard is that freakish thing when like, a baby in utero like consumes its sibling and that sibling is alive inside of itself. So like Blackbeard is multiple people. That's why he can have multiple devil the fruits. Fuck? I mean, it's a it's a phenomenon that, that has, I don't know about like if the sibling has like survived, um, but I know it has happened. It actually happened in, um, in, it is a fictional thing as well, but in the Venture Brothers in like season two, the, the, like, the main guy, Venture, like his, weird little twin who had been living inside his body, like, breaks out and becomes his own, like, guy. I, it's weird. I don't know if it's at all real in any way. But, like, we know conjoined twins are a thing. Yeah, okay. So so, so there's a theory that Blackbeard mm-hmm. might have mm-hmm. a smaller version of himself or, like, a brother or sister in, like... Oh, and I forgot. The, it, the other part of the theory the is soul. that Blackbeard's... Something like that. Um, Blackbeard's flag is a three skull, it has three skulls horizontally. Oh my god, what if Blackbeard is three people? And, but, uh, uh, just to all the details on that, Oda has said, he was asked, like, what's a flag that, like, didn't make sense to you, or, or that you regret or something? He didn't say he regretted it, but he said, like, oh, uh, Blackbeard's flag, I just made up. Because I just, this was in an SBS, like, decades ago. It was like, I just made up Blackbeard's flag, because I didn't know what to do, so I put three skulls, I thought it looked cool. So maybe it's been like soft retconned to have meaning, but at the time of its design, when that thing about like, you mean they, what? Is he multiple people? Uh, I I think that theory is is flimsy at best. Um, (laughs) He wouldn't have known back then if if he hadn't just designed the flag. Well, actually, there was, he probably designed the flag at the same time as that, but like. Right, exactly. um, But he said it didn't have meaning at that time. So. Hang on, I was going to think, I had something in my head and I sort of gone. Well, here, t- uh, take a moment, because I, I just wanted to say about this that considering all these factors, I think the most likely thing here is that what's being implied here is that Blackbeard is weird and suspicious and, and most of all, like, untrustworthy. Like, he's he's a little bit different from everybody else. He's a little bit, maybe he's just, like, more scared. Maybe he's less able to, like, form bonds with other people because he was, like, abused as a child or something. And that's why he, like, doesn't sleep because he's worried about being taken advantage of or something. We don't know. Um, yeah. But I... Uh, th- I these uh, whole... Yeah, yeah. Did you th- remember something? Yeah, I remember the the, the thing was, like, I doubt mm-hmm. that Oda would design Blackbeard mm-hmm. to have, like, a power that he doesn't, like, expect... Like, he doesn't know what Blackbeard's power is going to be until... Like way later yeah. in, the, in the manga, like he's the, kind mm-hmm. of the main villain in in some ways. Yeah, yeah. So I, like, I think f- for my money, what I if I could just get what I wanted, what I hope the revelation is about Blackbeard is that like, you know, it. I, I want Blackbeard, who's been shown to be like a studious, like smart guy. He's got plans. I want it to be something that, like, Blackbeard discovered some truth about devil fruits that, like, maybe this whole thing about, like, you can't even eat a devil fruit if you've already eaten one that was, like, most discussed during um, Eni's Lobby with CP9. Because there's, like, theories about, like, scientifically your body can't handle it. No, it's because there's a devil in it and the devils will fight each other and kill you. Like, it's clearly mythologized in many ways. I like to think that Blackbeard, like, did some sort of research, figured out something that other people don't know, and, like, he was able to use that in order to, like, have multiple devil fruits. Um, I, 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 you know, again, I don't know that. I just like to think that that's what happened. That would make me the most satisfied. And maybe maybe it's even just the truth that actually, guys, it's just fine to eat multiple devil fruits. It's just been a superstition that you can't. Even that would be an interesting twist. Um, although it would be a, like, kind of surprising why people haven't uh, just, you know, tested that out in the past. But nonetheless, I, um, I, I could imagine yeah. like some pirate has forced a crewmate to, to eat two just to see. Yeah, so, I, I, like, I agree. So it's it's probably legit. It's probably, it's probably like legit. it's pro- it's probably like th- there's a special way. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely the reason I think he shrouded himself when he got Whitebeard's fruit was mm-hmm. in part to make sure other people didn't understand how he would do it, so that the secret was safe. That's so definitely so that other people didn't start doing it. 
you know, okay, I'll just say on that, because that's, that's an interesting point that people often bring up, and I generally agree that would make a lot of sense, and I think that's probably true. I will just say that it's also theoretically possible that um, at that point in time, what was being hidden was not necessarily some unique special method of, like, acquiring the Devil Fruit, which is definitely possible. It's also possible that what was being hidden was Blackbeard's knowledge of, that we now as the audience know, that we learned afterward of, like, that when you kill someone with the devil fruit, if you have, like, a fruit, it will become the new one that gives you the new devil fruit power. Because that was the moment Whitebeard died. And maybe that was what Blackbeard was trying to hide. Just, like, well, yeah, from, from either, a, from either a, way, I mean, that's yeah. the same sort of thing. It's just sort of yeah. like he's hiding the secrets so that other pirates don't gain an advantage over him. Right, right. I'm just saying, like, theoretically it's possible that, like, his his mechanism was simply eating the fruit, and he was only hiding how to obtain the fruit. Uh, again, these are all just theories. I'm just throwing out everything, because it's obviously interesting and a huge mystery for the series. Um, but uh, I'm sure one day we will we will know the truth. Um, yeah, all yeah. right, so let's let's keep going. So, next, we have Gold Roger talking about the the Poneglyphs and all of the secrets. This is a Indeed. big, uh, big and pr uh, cool conversation he's having with and, and Whitebeard by the way, and Odin. To, 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 yeah, absolutely. But to, to get onto it to begin with, I, I just want to say, when I first read this, I was like, isn't it a weird coincidence that, like, Roger happened to pull out his Poneglyph readings for Odin? But then I got thinking, and I was like, I, I my guess, I don't know this for sure, but my guess would be that the reason that uh, uh, Roger was so interested in Oda, or sorry, in, uh, the, like, the same guy, in Odin up to this point, because, you know, I was saying, it's like, there's a lot of dick sucking going on of Odin. I think that it makes a lot more sense if, like, to us early on in, in One Piece, like, Nico Robin, we've always said is kind of like the most important character because she's like the only person on the planet who can read Poneglyphs, which we know is like endgame lore shit. She's so important for that. But, I mean, Robin didn't exist in this. Uh, who knows what they were doing in fucking Clover and the boys if, uh, you know, Roger never met him or anything. I don't know. But my guess is that in his travels, Roger had heard about Wano and maybe even heard that, like, the people of Wano like, have some connection to the Poneglyphs in some way, and that's why he was, like, so interested in meeting somebody from Wano, this, like, isolated, closed-off country. Uh, I, 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 like, that's not really shown here, but just if that is the case, it totally satisfies me, uh, although it is a little convenient that the first person from Wano to leave in a million years happens to be the only person on the fucking planet who is the one who can read Poneglyphs, the heir of the Kozuki clan, but... It's One Piece. Putting that aside, that I don't really well, care about as much. Is it is it just the Kozu, uh, Kozuki clan line that can read it, or is it just like a cultural thing? Like, do well, people it is, in Wano know how to read it? Uh, uh, our boy Odin clarifies specifically uh, that these symbols are a secret code. The way of decodifying it was passed down to gener generation to generation of the firstborn oh, of yes. the Wanos. He is the only person because his dad died on the planet who uh, who would have this secret. So and wait, isn't that, that convenient? Mean... That yeah. means Momonosuke probably knows. That is exactly what it means, Gib. That is exactly what it Ooh. means. Now, now, just right now in the narrative, he's probably too young. But we know that Odin's got a few more years of life in him to teach Momonosuke a thing or two. So, uh, right, th him telling us that that is the tradition basically confirms what we all suspected. That uh, uh, Momonosuke will very likely have, you know, the, the, the solution. He will have the translation and the, the secrets of, of Poneglyph stuff. Uh, so there you go. So there you go. Although, you know, it's also interesting to note, we'll, we'll talk about this more, yeah, but, like, Odin himself doesn't appear to know what Poneglyphs are or, like, much of the secrets. He was just passed down, like, the code itself and how to translate them. So, like, what will Momonosuke know that just, for example, Nico Robin doesn't already know? Because she can already translate them. Um, hmm, it's a little hard to say. But then again, there's Toki. I forgot about Toki. Toki has all the secrets. That'll... Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> In any case, yeah. let's so, get to Roger. Yeah. 13 years ago, Roger, the Roger Pirates got to the end of the the, the uh, log pose, all the way across the new world. Holy the, shit. At the, at they did time, it. They it did what Luffy's trying to do. World. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and he says the Roadstar Island. I don't know whether the, the island is called Roadstar or, like, Roadstar is something... Some other thing, um, but he got to, they got well, to the end. By the way, yes. So uh, basically, it seems to be clearly stated here that it appears that the last island that one can normally get to via 
uh, Poneglyphs, or sorry, via the, the log pose, is this island called uh, Road Star. Although I, I take some objection to that. Like, I, I, I check the Maybe other I'm translation. Maybe I'm just thinking of, of Star Road from uh, <laughs> Mario RPG. I have uh, a, a quick uh, translation question. I did not check the Japanese. This is why I should really make myself, I should get the fucking Japanese so I can check these things, because I like to check these things. Okay, Road Star could be a name of an island. That's pretty cool. I, I just, I happen to notice that in Japanese, the word load, like L-O-D-E, uh, would be spelled the exact same way in katakana. And a, a load star is a star used to guide the course of a ship especially the pole star. I'm just saying, it would be written the same way. Oh, L-O-D-E it, star, yeah. L-O-D-E star. Like, a load star, I would bet my bottom fucking dollar that the real translation of this should be load star island. Like, if you were to ask Oda, he would tell you. Um, but because it's Japanese, like, it's hard, you can't actually tell. Uh, but it's just the name of an island. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. It just would sure fit thematically, if that's uh, if that's what it meant. Um, so, Oda, call me up on the phone. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about this. Yeah. Uh, they got to the end, and mm -hmm. it wasn't the final island. The log post couldn't take them any early, uh, any further, and so Roger has this crazy theory that mm -hmm. there is one more island, one more final island needed hmm. to explore the entire world. Indeed. Which, at this point, is the reason these guys are out here. It's just to explore the world and have fun and be cool. Yeah, no one even knows about this whole conquer the Grand Line thing. Like, I mean, to be fair, oh, oh, Roger says he's the only crew that's ever even got to Lodestar. He says that. I'm, I'm going to call it Lodestar. Fuck it. Um, but uh, so so no one had even gotten that far up to this point, which seems to include Whitebeard. But he's like, but we can go even further beyond. So he's got like some other trick up his sleeve. He, he feels he knows that there's a that there's a secret out there. Fascinating, Roger. Yeah. Fascinating. So he's got the, the big old uh, thing here. He's pointing to all the, the poneglyphs. Right, uh, right. Carved into four special red poneglyphs, the clues to the island's coordinates. But, this is a but, the mm -hmm. world government banned the translation of the poneglyphs. Oh, it's not a but. We already knew this. Um, uh, right, right. I, I so, have a question about this, though. I have, a, I have a question. It's that, how does Roger know that these four red poneglyphs lead to the end, considering that we know up to meeting Odin... Uh, there was no one who could translate these. That, like, he was looking for Odin to find someone who could translate. How uh, did he well, know? Yeah. This is the this is the thing I think we we've been hinted at. Roger. Oh wait, having, the animals knew. Is, the people of Zone knew that it was part of that. Okay, I'm sorry. Go go on. Go on. Well, the the what was it? The voice to hear all things or whatever it was. That something yeah. that Momonosuke has. Something that right. Luffy has. And something that is implied Gold Roger has. Indeed. Um, indeed. In Sky Island or Skypea, mm -hmm. when he was up there and it's like Roger was here on the on the bell. Indeed. Um, so I assume Roger can understand these these stones. Um, I don't know why don't... he needs Odin in that. In, okay. That See point, that that but... that means he he must not actually be able to read them. The fact that he needs needs Odin here. Just it proves that he can't actually read what's going on in them. It must be something else, which is a little strange, um, but fair enough, I guess. Hmm. I mean, th there's a big hint at the end of this chapter, so we, let's discuss that more uh, yeah. when we get to that. Yeah, I guess it was. I I, I just assumed that Roger could read it uh, mm -hmm. because of that that thing in, in Skypea. Uh, I think that's I didn't, debunked. I didn't expect. I didn't expect. Uh, a Kozukli guy to be there. And the you might even say that when Oda wrote that, it sure seemed like it was implied that Roger was able to read Poneglyphs, but now that he's gotten to this point of the story, he's thinking a little bit, oopsie, I, I don't want that to be how that works, uh, because I have to involve... In fact, I, I'm just gonna say, I, if Odin... If we weren't trying to work uh, Odin into being an important part of the narrative, if we weren't kind of trying to shoehorn Odin in to Roger and Whitebeard's stories, like the super important character, it's for the sake of making Wano like a more interesting arc. I think if Oda could, or if, if Roger could just read them with his voice of all things or whatever, uh, like that wouldn't affect the narrative at all. Like nothing would have changed, except now we've just got this third wheel attached to the fucking you know, like, it's it's white, mm. the three most important characters, Whitebeard, Roger, and Odin. Like, why? Why is Odin so important? Because we're in Wano right now, is how it feels. Hmm, suspicious, Oda. 
I very suppose. suspicious. I think I think maybe mm-hmm. that it was like initially. Nah, nah. It, it, I don't it, think it, so, dog. I, I don't think know. so. I think it's, this is a fucking retcon hard. going I mean, on the, for no reason. Hmm. I'd like to think that it isn't a retcon. Like maybe like it, it's not like it ruins Skype. Well, okay, of course people are gonna say that like we, well we, we never knew we never knew that Roger himself could write in Poneglyph. Like it was the never only confirmed. thing about this is like these are yeah. these inscriptions carved into four special red stones. Mm-hmm. Why does he think they might be clues to the island's coordinates? I guess because well, you know they're what? the I've... only ones that are red, and he's like, he's, <laughs> they must he's... do that specific thing because they're red. That doesn't well, mean anything. He knows that the, the poneglyphs were commonplace, and he knows that there are blue ones and there are red ones, and the red ones are four of them. How does he I, even know that there's only think, four red poneglyphs? How does he know that? maybe, well, you know, maybe, it, you know, I, I don't know. It's, okay, actually, it's, you know what, Gib, let, of... me, let me help you out, because I think I, I, I have answered my own question on this, because we know that just, for example, on Zoe, we know that, like, the, the mink tribe, they knew, and they were able to explain, wait a minute, were they only able to explain... Because they had been on Roger's fucking crew, is that why Inurashi and and Nekomamushi were able to explain that, or did no, the clan know? No, because the, the the mink tribe, as we saw, uh, Nekomamushi and Inurashi, um, they left to go find Wano, right? Because they heard about the Kozuki clan like alliance or thing. So like, it goes mm. deeper for the mink tribe. Than it has been for Roger. Roger okay, you know what I'll like say. A new guy in this. Uh, there might be some gray edges here, but I will say that I am satisfied by thinking that there is this like passed down historical knowledge to some degree about the nature of poneglyphs and the road poneglyphs. It seems so. I'm I'm willing to just say okay, there was some knowledge out there. Roger somehow found this knowledge in his epic travels throughout the world. Yeah. I do for, not find for, that somehow unsatisfying. Somehow he found out that there are four of them, and yeah. presumably he's holding up like one of the rubbings from the ones like he's. Although found I I, I encourage it, or maybe right. Just one of them. I'm not sure. I encourage anyone, if somebody wants to go check Zo, the, the Zoark real quick, if there just happens to be a statement that's like, me and Inurashi and Nekomamushi, it, we only know these things because we were on Roger's crew. If that's ever said, then I will be a little bit curious as to exactly where we got this information. But, uh, okay, it, it doesn't really matter. That's not that big a deal. Mystery and answers are out there. Roger the, found the, them. He's the yeah. greatest pirate in the world. I got it. And I got it. Yeah, there's also, like, it could just be that he found other sources that led him to mm-hmm. believe that there are these poneglyphs yes, lead yes. to a secret island. He believes there is a secret island. Mm-hmm. He has been I think that the the thing that he has been it's been 13 years since mm-hmm. he got to the end of the Grand Line. So he's had 13 right, years to, right. to cook up this conspiracy theory. So I guess it's not too far out of like mm-hmm. Out of nowhere. Yeah, he, and plus, uh, let me just say, this information. to even further strengthen that, like, sure, we know that, like, the, the Mink tribe has their connection to the Kozukis, and they had a road poneglyph, but, like, also, like, the kings of Alabasta had a poneglyph that they were, like, protecting as part of their, like, royal duty. Uh, in Skypea, or rather, in, in Shandia, that then got blasted into the sky, uh, uh, right, in Shandia that then became Skypea through the knock-up stream, whatever, like, that's just another kingdom that was, like, guarding like, uh, another poneglyph in the belt. So, like, we know that, like, when the poneglyphs were made, information and the actual poneglyphs themselves were sent out, and, like, people were tasked to protect them throughout the world, like, in opposition to the world government and the Tenryubito and whatever. So, like, information is out there about them yeah. and what they did. So is it so hard to believe that Roger could find it? No. I think I, I am satisfied yeah, the, by, I think, by that. I think the thing that mm-hmm. sort of confuses me with all this is... Yeah. I've always been thinking of Gold Roger and the Great Era of Pirates as mm-hmm. the, the the history, quote unquote, the past. But no, uh, but no, but no, they are right now. They are new boys thinking mm-hmm. about new things, and there is more history yet still in the past from where these guys hmm. are. It's like true. There, there's a whole like century hidden. And the Golden the, Age of Piracy doesn't even die until Gold. It doesn't even start until Gold Roger dies and says, "I left everything I own in one piece." That's when. Yeah. It starts. So it's yeah. like mm-hmm. I, the idea of the poneglyphs being created and stuff, mm-hmm. and then Gold Roger being like hundreds of years later, Gold right. Roger uh, arrives. It's sort of like for like a, for a few seconds, sort of like oh mm-hmm. yeah, that not the same time period. They're both in the in the past <laughs> in relation to Luffy's adventure, but indeed they're indeed. very far away from each other. So 
no doubt. And and so Roger just comments, as you were saying, that like uh, the, the the world government doesn't want uh, anyone to translate this, so they banned it. That means that the world government doesn't want anyone to reach the final island because they know these secrets. Oh, so there you go. So more people know about these secrets in the world government too. So Roger could have found it from them too. Uh, uh, which only confirms that there must be a huge treasure there, is what Roger is saying. So this yeah. is before One Piece, or, yeah, I mean, One Piece could be the treasure he finds and leaves there. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll have to find out. Uh, but if yeah, we can so, get there, yeah, go on, go on. So Roger is, um, he's the perfect sort of man, the, the pirating soul. He just mm -hmm. wants treasure and fuck the world <laughs> government. I'm just going to find whatever you're trying to hide. Indeed. Lol. And if I can find it, I'll be the best, I'll be the strongest, the greatest pirate, and then I'll be dot, dot, dot. Ooh, I wonder what he could have said in that in that space, but I guess we'll never know. The pirate prince. Yeah. <laughs> and then Whitebeard and Odin are just like, nani the fuck? And of course they both laugh, Whitebeard calls him like a child, but, but Odin is in awe, and he is just thoroughly drenched. It's like a waterfall on those Japanese doubloons. Uh, he is so into the sky. I feel bad for Whitebeard. You can see Odin cucking him at this very moment. It's happening you mean, bit by uh, bit. Roger. Uh, I mean, I meant Odin by shifting his love towards Roger is cucking him. But yes, also Rogers is cucking him too. Uh, insanity, insanity. And then, then boom! Here it comes. The cucking is official. Please let me take. Okay, so this is how it went down. Roger asks Whitebeard, "Let me borrow Odin for one year." so that he can be with me, so I can translate this shit, because with him, he's the last thing I need. I will be able to translate the fucking Poneglyphs and get to the fucking final island. And Odin is uh, yeah, a little incredulous. Incredul I think he's a little intrigued. He's a little interested in this, but he's like, what? I don't know about that. And uh, then fucking Gold Roger bows the fuck down, bitch, to Whitebeard, to Odin, asking them to please sail with me. Uh, they're all very like, oh, no, no, you shouldn't bow to me. No, 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 please don't do that. And Whitebeard is not too pleased with the idea. He's he's quite put out. And we can see he makes big tsunamis, big Gura Gura powers activate as he's fucking up the whole ocean around. So they seem to have another little fight about it, uh, which is pretty sick. Good to see the Gura Gura in action once again. Uh, but But Odin, he's saying it right here. I could feel it in my blood. I can't hide it, man. I can't hide it. I just feel the drive. He's a real pirate, Whitey. You're you're gay and over the hill, and I hate you. So I want to go. Let me go, Whitey Chan. Let me go. Uh, and Whitebeard is truly love please. me, you'd let me go. Oh, uh, if you truly love you, let me fuck Roger, Whitebeard. <laughs> And, and then uh, he does yet another disgusted face. Yeah, really there funny. it is. The, the meme continues. And uh, we see, uh, he, he says, so notably, he doesn't call Odin his son. He says, we are brothers. So they're doing the whole brother thing with Whitebeard and Odin instead of, like, son, which is, I don't know, kind of interesting to me. I wonder if, like, I've never heard him call anyone else on his crew a brother uh, instead of, uh, you know, like, a son. So uh, Maybe he's just that cool. He's just, I, I kind of feel that's where they're going with it. Plus, Odin kind of feels like an outsider in the crew anyway. Um, but yeah. uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, as I he shows you, right now. You may have uh, skipped over the, the one oh, little thing mm -hmm. uh, that Roger was saying, this is my last wish to you. So, like, I think the reason this ah, yes. was able to happen mm -hmm. is because Whitebeard knows Roger only has so long to live, and he's like, Fuck you, but fine, I guess. You know, I'm not so die. sure. I'm not. I'm not thoroughly convinced that he knew that. Like he said, my last wish. That he did definitely say that. Which you know, ominous. We know that he's got a disease. Uh, I'm not sure that Whitebeard was like aware that Roger was dying. And I, I think that if he knew, uh, I mean, they have a complicated relationship. I don't know. They're obviously well, bros. I mean, Roger. I like to was think he kept it a secret. About this fact. I mean, he was just saying it out loud. I, I, like, uh, if you think back, though, I, I would wonder if all the situations where he's saying out loud is just, like, on his ship with his crew. And, like... But he says, my last wish. Like, like it sounds like my dying wish, please. I, I, I kind of feel begging. like... I mean, I, I could be wrong, and I, I see your point. But I personally think this is kind of one of those... It's a little bit of a wink-wink to an audience. Because if Whitebeard didn't know... He's thinking like, oh, well, okay. He's saying like, this will be the last thing he asks of me in our long pirating rivalry many decades to come from this. He'll I, never get another wish. Uh, I, I don't, well, it's not like that's the only reason he allows this because yeah, uh, I know. Odin wants to go and it's mm -hmm. like, uh, I think it's just a combination of, of those things. Like his respect for Roger mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like, 
you know, obviously he gets mad because fuck you. He's my he's my boy. That's my boy. Can't take my boy. <laughs> but at the same time, like yeah, yeah, you know, I respect you as a as a person, as a as a cool guy, as a as an equal, as a mm-hmm. rival. I think we we don't know for sure, but obviously those things that you were saying are obviously going into the decision. Yeah, and um, I, I just yeah. it just feels like mm-hmm. the fact that he said my last wish. I just sort of perhaps perhaps that's certainly part of it. could be hinted. Uh, so the, the ultimately he's they, they, he's just like okay, all right, that, sure, I guess you can do it. Uh, the the so apparently the other Kozuki boys are gonna stay behind. We see. Uh, was it I- Iga Inu? I don't remember. Izo, Izo is Izo. staying. Uh, we see fucking Vista doing a cool like, whoa, stay behind this line, boys. Do not go join the Roger crew as well. You, you're our fucks. Um, but uh, Odin says, yeah, you guys can do what you want. I'm gonna stay here. I'm kind of surprised that like, why Izo's just like, I like it here. I'm staying here. But like, that's your lord, man. Did you, did Izo in these years of being on Whitebeard's crew? have developed more loyalty to Whitebeard than to I Odin. I suppose that must be what happened, because yeah, the Minks yeah. don't stay on Whitebeard's crew. Maybe they do, but... Well, but yeah, no, they I don't. mean... They, they go with Roger, but, like... The, the um, Minks seem more, like, flippant. Like, they were just, like... They just... They kind of seem to do what they fucking want to do. But Izo... I don't know. Izo seems more attached to Whitebeard. Although, you know what? We, we haven't gotten that moment. I was expecting that one panel where, like, Izo has now, like... The last time we saw Izo and Whitebeard talk... Izo said, like, I'll never forgive you. We didn't get a, okay, I've forgiven you, or a, like, a panel of, like, a blush, I, like, ooh, you guys are my family now, or anything like that. I think that will come you later, think? when it's, like, because mm. mm. he's being lent for one year, and he right. will come back. That's the plan, um, anyway. And when whenever that year is up, mm-hmm. and we see, like, Whitebeard seeing that, uh, that they probably like maybe react to the news that Roger turned mm-hmm. himself in and was executed, and it's like Jesus that will Christ. be a thing. That will be a thing. For and sure. then you know, I think in that area of mm-hmm. of this flashback, if it can, continues on to that point, yeah, will be yeah. that Ezo moment. Uh, it definitely could be the case, though he seems Cause pretty because at that point, um, mm. the Minx return to mm. Zo or Wano. I'm not sure. I'm just surprised and, that Izo chooses to stay with the Whitebeards while her lord is is leaving, which makes me feel like the allegiances yeah. have shifted. But uh, yeah, whatever. Like the the not fact a big that Izo doesn't go back to Wano, and mm-hmm. um, obviously the the wife and the children yeah. and presumably the Minx go as well. Right, is, right. It's it's got to be addressed in some small panel somewhere. I, I would I would certainly feel cheated if I didn't get that Oda. So, but I, as you said, there's plenty of time to do that, and it, it's interesting. They're, they're trying to, I feel like Oda's trying to soften the blow of this cuckoldry by being like, yeah, he's really a Whitebeard boy, but he's just temporarily going to join uh, the Rogers crew. I mean, he was only temporarily going to join Whitebeard's crew to begin with. Uh, I mean, it wasn't stated that, like, it just, his, 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 what's the well, word it, looking well, it, for? It wasn't temporarily. He, he was, they said, like, if you hold on to that chain for three days or whatever, mm-hmm. you can join the crew. Well, say, you're right about that. It's just that from the start, o- uh, Odin's involvement with the Whitebeards has felt, you know, I'm sure it's biased because I know he doesn't stay with them forever, but it's felt, like, less committal. Because, again, he calls him a brother, not a son. He is always running away and not really following the plans. He didn't want to be division commander. He is a division commander, so fair enough. But, um... I'm just, uh, I, I feel a vibe of a lack of attachment here to, you know, like this crew as a family unit or, or anything, which, which is fine. I mean, you know, they don't have to be, but uh, I don't know, a little unusual. Okay, in any case, in any case, so Whitebeard here is not pleased. See, someone's calling him father right now. Won't you say goodbye? Roger gave them all the treasure they had, all the gold and the provisions, but then Whitebeard says, give them back the provisions, you idiots. Do you want Odin and his family to starve? Because, in fact, Odin, his wife, Toki, and the children will be going along to do the shit. I'm a little surprised, actually, that, like, Toki and the kids went too. It's going to be a dangerous fucking journey. But, it uh, sure is, but I mean, it's been dangerous already. That that's very true. Crew. That that's certainly true. Uh, it's, it's their life they chose, I guess. So there you go, Toki and the and the kids, Momonosuke and Hiori are there too. Oh boy, Jesus Christ! I hope they don't get sunk by a friendly marine vessel. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, the Oro Jackson though. I love this panel of the Oro Jackson. It looks so fucking sick. I love Roger's Jolly Roger with the double mustache. Gold D Roger on the fucking flag, black sails. Oh, it's so cool. It's it's and like yeah. the mermaids in the, the front. And the big egg. Oh, and the big egg. The what's in the egg? What's in the egg? Oh, okay. 
now that we've seen this, confirmation. I don't know if this was proved before. We know that he doesn't get the egg at Raftel. Uh, like, there's, that's not One Piece related. That's just something he picked up along the way. Uh, I, I wonder if we will ever learn what the fuck that egg is. But uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Roger and baby time. As he, yeah, he's you holding know, a baby. He's like, uh, him. throws overboard. <laughs> we see, uh, useless. I use it as ballast. Uh, he's holding Hiori. We see Silver's Rayleigh holding Momonosuke, saying, uh, this reminds me of the past. What the fuck is he talking? What is that implying? This reminds you of the past. Well, I mean, maybe. When, I remember when I was a baby, Roger. Those were good times. <laughs> remember when we were both babies and we were being held by pirates? Oh, it was good. Oh, it was fun. Um... I he's feel probably like just got a long like um mm-hmm. like maybe he's a dad or something. I mean, I would be fascinated to know if he does in fact have kids somewhere out there. Uh, obviously, he's been doing this pirating thing a long time. If it was, it was, it's been thirteen years since they got to Lodestar Island. Like, I I'm forgetting the age. I'm guessing they're in their like forties now, generally speaking. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Cl- close enough. And also, um, in the other translation, by the way, that, that's translated as, they remind me of my childhood. I don't know which of those is, like, more accurate or, like, what's being implied there, but I'm a little, I'm a little suspicious. Yeah, it could, it could just remind them of babies and childness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, and by the way. on the high seas. And uh, thoroughly debunked, at last, we now know. So, Momonosuke did, in fact, meet Gold Roger. There they are. They're on a crew. They'll be together for at least a year or so. So, cool. They did meet. It wasn't Ace. It wasn't any weird shit with that. I mean, we already confirmed that last time, but now we, yeah. we see the meat. How, how nice. And Roger Dog that Storm thing. and Cat Storm. <laughs> it's like Cat Bug, I believe, because Mushi means bug. Cat Fug. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they're just like, eh, you were fun, Odin, so we wanted to come with you. Fuck the fuck the Izo. Fuck the Whitebeards. So these two are really the cuckles, the, the, the cuckers. They're the more so cuckolds. than... <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and Whitebeard is mad that they're gone. Oops. Well, here we are on the Gold Roger crew. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And so we got uh, a bunch, uh, another shot of a uh, bunch of uh, Gold Roger pirates. Oh, they Shanks look so cool. And Buggy. They're like, we're not going to accept you just as quickly just because you're here to translate stuff. And he's you're like, only okay. here for info, yeah. yeah. And then Odin does his Odin thing, and he does really funny things, and everyone likes it. And Odin's doing really, that Odin immediately thing. Immediately the cool... The immediately the cool guy and everyone's cheering. Yeah, he's just too Chad to not love. Although I love this panel of everybody lined up here pointing at him. There's that guy with the weird onion hair holding the knife, Taro. There's that French dude. Like, why is that guy on the fucking Roger crew? I don't know. There's a guy on the top right uh, with a, I don't know, fucking Spartan helmet. There's a guy, you can see the guy with bat wings on the right, cut off by the by the thing there. I don't know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, so there you go. Do you think Odin's... the onion head guy would be like a, a Norland uh, relative? Hmm, no. Because both Norland and Cricket both had actual things on their head, as I recall. They had actual, like, chestnuts on their head, whereas this guy simply has a point. Ooh, this guy could be related to Onion. Maybe he's the dad. Oh, my God. Deepest lore. Deepest fucking lore. Okay. Whoa. Uh, uh, onion, right? This guy has an Onion head. From Steven Universe? From Steven Universe. Okay. Here, here it is. You know how Usopp is the son of Yasup, who was on Shanks's crew, right? This is known. Mm-hmm. There's also a man from that same village. Uh, F- is it Fusha? I can't remember the name. From that same village named Onion, who has the exact same Onion hairstyle as this guy from the Gold Roger crew that Shanks is an apprentice on. What if Onion Man and Shanks uh, both were involved in some way in Yasup? And they, they get Yasup somewhere, and they go there, and they have, like, a they have a thing there. And Onion is, like, this guy's son or grandson or something. Oh, my God, the lore could be uh, very... Th- there's, a con- there's a connection. Are you seeing the connection that I'm drawing here? I'm seeing a, a little degree. bit of a connection. There's a little bit of one. There's a little bit. I wonder, th- uh, That guy, I Wait, think, is mean, new. Do you mean yeah. on Usopp's island? What did I say? Kids. Yes, I meant Usopp's. In Usopp's Veggie Pirates, there was Carrot, Onion, and Pepper. Uh, and uh, I forget the Japanese names. So this could be Onion's grandpa. Yes, or or father, I guess. I don't know. He, he'd be well, he's a bit old, old to be a father because he's already older than Shanks. He's just the too not... old, though. You know, he looks reasonably young. He's a younger well, member of the crew, I think. If he if he's something. like twenty five or something, then mm-hmm. in twenty years, um, when you know Onion is. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, born and a child. Yeah. Then he'd be like forty something, and he'd have like a mm-hmm. an eleven or ten year old son. That's not yeah, too unusual. Might, yeah, that, that could that, work. That that could check out. Yeah. 
Fascinating. Fascinating. Um, anyway, the point is, there's Buggy and Shanks having a good time. Everyone's partying down. All the fan favorites are here. Uh, that fishman guy, I'm sure there's many faces people can recognize. And I think he made actually a big pot of Odin that they are all currently eating. So what a way to welcome him. He's got a nice face yeah. there. They all love Odin now. You did it. Way to go. Way to go. Congrats. And so we see a little uh, bit of Crocus mm -hmm. with his uh, medical box. And he's saying, haha, Lord uh, and Lord. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Roger. Roger. <laughs> yeah, Captain. Lord Roden. Rodent uh, <laughs> only has one year left to live. Nani, really how surprising! See, this is why I think it's a surprise because this this seems to my, to me to be news. Given it, I mean, Roger knew he, he didn't have a lot of time left, but uh, yeah. to me, this feels like new information to him that he's laughing at. So That's he's why he's got, in a hurry. There you he's go. He's got to yeah. hurry around the world, looking in all the places he hasn't looked, trying to find the road poneglyphs to translate them so he can find Raftel and mm -hmm. be the coolest guy ever. Indeed, or laugh tail, as it's also known. <laughs> yeah, I'm That's still getting funny. used. I call it. Rap I'm tail. laughing to that. I feel yeah. So boom! Oh my god, we we knew that this happened. We had heard history of it before, but we see Roger flying up the knock upstream. There he goes, just like Luffy did in those you know, epic chapters so long ago. I, I was expecting to see a little wings on the side of that. Me too. Jackson, the wings didn't do isn't. anything though for the for the straw hats as they were flying. Oh I think yeah, they were purely cosmetic, I, I, as I understand I, it. I remember them saying being told that they needed them, and I felt like it was actually necessary, but I guess not. Uh, you know, maybe for like uh, what those wings didn't flap or anything. They were for stabilization, if nothing they were else. Just sort of like being able to steer when going straight up. Yeah, I, I mean, I could, I could believe. I don't think they did much to like move them or anything as they were flying, but I, I could be wrong. But am I willing to believe that Roger got up the knock upstream with the ship without wings? Uh, I, I can believe it. I can believe it. Yeah. Oh my God! But it's Sky so Island. Oh, it's the best arc in One Piece. There it is, everybody. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's so magical to see Roger and the boys there after I don't know 15 years. So cool, man. So cool. And so so Odin right. was with them when in they the, went there. In this, in this um, first panel, mm -hmm. there's a number of beanstalk things coming up Indeed. and around. Is Indeed. there anything that's clearly different from what we know? Um, you know, man, I would have to go and read those fucking chapters and compare it to the shit. Because that, that huge, like, that arch of, mm -hmm. like, uh, thing... Yeah, yeah. I just don't remember it being like that. I don't really... Well, let me see. So there's a... Like, what's different? That would be interesting to note. Um, so, you know, the thing is, the beanstalk, as I recall it in general, is like... Um, uh, what was what was I trying to say about it? The So, like, the beanstalk had grown up um, from uh, the center of... What, what was it called? Uh, Verth. From the, the fairy Verth. No, was very, very, fairy Verth is the moon. Well, the Verth that was on here. No? When they showed how the the Sky Island came, God damn it! It like it flew up and then landed on the beanstalk and was, was stuck. And oh shit! It you're up. right. I forgot that thing was like a natural growth in the clouds, which yeah, I mean, maybe they know. they had a tiny bit of of uh, verse and I'm a, googling one seed this shit. and it just they just made it grow. In okay, the I was gonna say like it's weird to see uh, things there. Okay, here let, let me paste this for you right now. Uh, I just googled Skypea, and this was the first thing that popped up. It looks basically identical. Like those ropes are there. That on the left uh, is probably okay. Verth, that forest there, which I think what like because remember Nami just kind of sailed over there at one point. So this all checks out to me. This looks this looks pretty pretty accurate. Nothing big seems to have changed. And, uh, oh, you know, that's not an archway. That's a road leading out of the island towards the verse. I think I, you're right. I, I think you're right. I figured yeah. it out. It just looked like a weird hole. And at this point, this was like 30 years ago or something. So we know, or maybe like 25, I don't know, or something up there. We know that um, uh, fucking uh, Gonfall is still in charge, is still God in this place yeah. right now. Not, uh, not Eneru, who had taken over relatively recently. Um, so cool. So fucking cool. Uh, so now we see that, uh, so as, as we all know, as we all historians of One Piece, the, the bell itself had disappeared because it just so happened that when the, uh, the beanstalk pierced the verth that was thrown up, on the very center of it was the bell, which is why it was so hard to find and why there was a whole arc trying to track it down uh, to the one place that it had to be on the island. Uh, but here we're saying, okay, well, first of all, we've got Buggy being like, oh, it's a bell made out of gold. I want it, Captain. So Buggy had been here. So fucking cool. Um, 
And then uh, Roger interestingly says, or someone says, presumably Roger, come back after you've become a captain, Buggy. And ma maybe he will. Maybe he will. Um, uh, let's take some gold. But that, okay, more importantly, Roger says here, this stone has quite a voice. Okay, let me read this whole thing, because this is, this is the real shit. This stone has quite a voice. That's why it was easy to find. Does it say something about an incredible power? Okay, so Roger cannot read this. This is explicitly confirmed here. He cannot read what's on the uh, poneglyph. He needs Odin for this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he can is, hear a the, voice. This is the sort of thing, yeah, this mm -hmm. is, all right. Now I get it. It's it's not that he can read mm -hmm. the words of any language, right. but he can he can sense the feeling. Okay. Like it's some it's it's just a nebulous sort of like he gets the gist, but he can't like it, it, with with coordinates. He wouldn't know where to look. He might know like generally the area, but well, he, he says needs here, somebody to translate it exact accurately so he can actually get to Raftel. Uh, his, I mean, that's true. But his point here about like the stone is a voice. That's why it was easy to find. Like we had an arc trying to find the arc, trying to find the bell or whatever. He was just he was probably drawn there by this voice that he could hear coming from the poneglyph or or the bell. Yeah. Here's what I don't understand: What the fuck is he talking about? The the stone has a voice. The 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 rock. I don't understand what that means. We know that living well, things have voices, like the oh, sea kings. No, it's it's like, it's like uh, in mythology or whatever. Like mm -hmm. somebody connected to the nature would be able to listen to the rocks and hear the stories from ancient history that they have witnessed. It's sort of like mm. they can't literally speak words, but they they. It's like a telekinetic sort of okay mind thing. So like. This maybe this is imbued. Mm -hmm. It's the same way I think that they explained like the the soul of a ship sort of has mm, a okay has a thing like the 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 experiences You're selling are, me on this that are like um, shared with uh, the in inanimate object like the love that's poured into a pirate ship sort of has a, a strange spiritual form that is mm -hmm. quantifiable and and can speak or right. or to to the people who who most want to to hear it and so with this stone i think it's like the history is is sort of what he can hear the the sort of the the people who crafted it and the people who celebrated around it and rang mm -hmm. it for certain occasions and well, the people who wrote the poneglyphs onto it he can mm. sort of feel that energy uh, in a sort of weird hippie way. Well, hang on. I, I believe that... So the bell is a large bell, but, like, embedded into the bell is the poneglyph. The poneglyph. And the, uh, yes, yeah. and then so in the, the gold, they carved these words in addition, I believe, that, that you know, uh, Robin saw and whatnot. Yeah. So, so that's what I think yeah, the yeah. voice is. Because uh, it's I, also... Because it would explain mm -hmm. a little bit of how Luffy sort of gets things mm -hmm. without really needing to listen to people. Well, of course, I, I, you probably know, you're probably it's not. Expect, it's probably not as pronounced or You as know like a voice, well uh, there's a certain voice I hear coming out of these stones, and it's the voice of the fucking author telling Roger where to go <laughs> and what fucking things to do in order to win One Piece. There's, a, okay, all right. I like your explanation. I think there's a little bit of, of that going on, but you know what, that's okay. That's part of the story. Roger, there's I, a reason I, I why Roger my, won my One Piece. Is, is what is intended to be taken from this. Cause, you know, because I'll say that, like, the so the City of Gold, so as I was saying earlier on in the episode, this is a juicy fucking episode, man. There's a lot going on here, this chapter. Um, but, like, civilizations were kind of tasked with the job of protecting their poneglyphs. So I would say, like, 800 years ago, or 900, whatever it was, the, like, the poneglyphs were made, they were given out to various civilizations, and those civilizations were told, protect this poneglyph. And so, like, the whole city of gold, as it exists now, I think was built after the poneglyph was delivered there as kind of, like, a combination task. Maybe, maybe it was embedded into there. To both protect their city of gold, the Shandians, and to protect the poneglyph. Those were, like, one and the same uh, goal for them. Same with like the Alabasta guys. Same with you know the 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 Mink tribe, etc. It's all kind of the same thing given out here by like some organization that's trying to oppose the world government, and they're they're wiping them from the face of the earth. So, like it, it sounds, it seems to me like the Poneglyph is kind of a unique force in the world. It's like this ancient artifact that is like, and like think of all like the history, all the narrative weight on poneglyphs as like these, these things that hold the secrets of the world. Um, although, okay, so so like Roger finding it, it, it seems to me a little bit goofy that like 
uh, oh, Roger could hear the voice of all things. He couldn't actually read the Poneglyphs. He had this guy who could read it. Okay, you know what? It's fine. As it turns out, it doesn't really matter that much. I think there's a little bit of aggrandizing of Odin going on. I forgive you, Oda. I forgive you. Although, here's here's my real question, though. Odin, or, or, or Roger here says that, like, okay, written on this Poneglyph is uh, about Poseidon, um, blah, blah, blah. So right on it, well, like... Odin says that. Yeah, right. Odin reads it and says, it, what's written on here is about Poseidon and whatnot. Um... Uh, and Roger just tells him, you know, right here, I don't, what does this have to do with the road Poneglyphs or getting to the end of the Grand Line? I feel like this is only here to be, like, the final justification of, like, why this writing is on Skypea. But, I mean, but what does this have to do with the quest? Why are they here? I don't quite understand well, the point. Well, the quest, They already I have the road is, Poneglyphs, is, don't they? They don't. No? Well, I mean, it's not, oh. it wasn't explained that they do. Um, oh. he had okay. one big thing of, like, he, he said, it was, it is said, for however he found that information out, that there are four yeah. red poneglyphs that oh. have coordinates, but you can't translate them, and I've been looking for a translator, and it's illegal to translate, and that's he's, why he's he got etchings. Uh, right, he's got yeah, etchings so he's, he's of... got He's got a rubbing from presumably, presumably one of one the of poneglyphs, them? or yeah, just yeah. a poneglyph. And right. he is going around finding poneglyphs. He can sense the poneglyphs. He's like, there's one on that island there. I can sense it. Mm -hmm. They go there. They look and find it. Is it a red one? Yes or no? And they, they've been going, I assume, for the for the for for this year. Yeah. They're going to go and find all the red poneglyphs, get to Raftel, and and then he's going to die. So <sighs> okay. So, it's all so coming together. Uh, strictly speaking, he might not even have any of the red poneglyphs, but he, he know not. he but he knows what the truth is, and he's found some of them. So like that's what we know for sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now hang on. Do you remember what what's the Rio poneglyph again? I kind of forget what that is. Oh oh, oh wait, sorry. The Rio the, poneglyph the, uh, is the four is red the, ones, right? Is it? I thought it was the the. Wait. No, I'm wrong. The Void Century. Uh, I, like, okay. that's the one Robin specifically is looking for. Yes, you are correct. The Rio Poneglyph is the message carried, to all poneglyph, carried by all the Poneglyphs along the Grand Line. It is rumored to contain the true history of the world. In order to find it, one must uh, take all other passages from other Poneglyphs with them on their travels. Okay, so, uh, okay, got it. it's the true history of the world. That, that, that's what Robin's trying to assemble. Yeah, okay, the true history of the it. world um, probably is at Raftel. Like mm -hmm. the real poneglyph, and yeah. if combined with all the other poneglyphs, you'll you'll figure it out. There's like a code or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Okay. So we so that this actually this isn't bullshit that Roger Roger would be here. He's hunting poneglyphs, and they oh to happen to take that time to show us him riding on the on the Skypea one because it is dope and it was cool, and uh, yes. it is a fun path. Okay. Got it. Oda, I forgive you <laughs> for this grave sin. Um, yeah. this, and this was a very good chapter. I really liked it. It was. It was. And thank you to our lovable translation boys for translating it for us so yes. that we could and they, uh, and they enjoy put, it. They put, a, they put an invite link to the, the pod D Discord in there as well with our little faces. Oh, so that's really cool. Oh, how cute. How cute. Uh, so if you want to read it and join the, the thing going on there, I don't know if these guys will be translating more. I suspect they will, but uh, but we'll see. They really yeah, We'll, we'll worked see. Hard. I mean, with... with 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 any like pirated thing mm -hmm. that gets destroyed, it, an equivalent will become available mm -hmm. not too long in the future. So it seems to be yeah yeah you can't stop everybody man. There's gonna be motivated people out there, but we'll see. So if we'll it's roll not the punches. us, if it's not if it's not if we don't hold all the cars, then somebody else will will make a, a big site and that'll be the new popular one to ever everyone to go to. Indeed. And I, I love their little thing here. Rip Jaimini's box, gone but not forgotten. And then in small, rip manga stream, forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Based. Uh, all right. Well, I guess that's it for now, lads. Uh, we will see you next week, uh, presumably, if there's another chapter. It looks like there will be. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, if you're celebrating oh. Christmas. That's, that's oh, what a nice present Yo, ho, for ho, everybody. and a bottle of milk for mm. Santa. Oh, that sounds great. I cannot wait to go and have a nice Christmas with the fam. I hope there will be a new one of these. Now, I know around this time of year, there's probably like New Year's, probably some times off. And so I don't know exactly what the release schedule is going to be, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Keep, keep it subscribed here to the podcast and you shall know all the things that you need to know about One Piece. Uh, so, of course, support us. Don't be a, a, a bootlicker, a, a loser, a freeloader. We would no, never, never consume anything for free when you can pay for it. That's the motive. That's the mo motto of us here at the Potty Cast. So definitely go to uh, patreoncom slash uh, the 
DCast Pirates. And give us your money on that. Link below to our Patreon. And follow us on Twitter at uh, PodCast Ahoy. Again, link down below. And uh, enjoy all the fun things that we do here on the podcast. And of course, you can join the Discord, even if you are a lowly Whitey Chan, because once in a while, Whitey Chan can do something worthwhile, like translate a chapter for us. Good work, everybody. Very good work. All right, we'll see you next time. There's a chapter. Have a good time, everybody. Take it easy. Bye. Good farewell. See you later.